Hey family, do you feel it's time to make a shift in your life but have no idea where to start and can use some support? Well, the time has come. My Master Life class, Strategize Your Vision, is officially open and this is your opportunity to start living the life that was designed specifically with you in mind. Strategize Your Vision is for you if you are finally ready to embrace your purpose and walk in your truth to impact the world. You are willing to do the work necessary to eliminate negative core beliefs that's blocking your progress. Or maybe you are simply ready to receive the blessings that has your name on them. Strategize Your Vision will teach you step by step how to develop a strategy that touches every area of your life to ensure your purpose and vision are in alignment. Family, you no longer have to do life alone because together we're going to get you clear on your purpose, write your vision plainly, and build a strategy for making your vision a reality. So if you're ready, I'm ready. So let's do the work together. All you have to do is visit strategizeyourvision.com to enroll today. Sometimes your support system far exceeds what it is that you can actually see. Probably the strongest people who support you are maybe perhaps people that you don't know or the people who give you that one referral or give you that one client or extend that one opportunity. And so your, your support system is as vast as, as the good that you put out in the world. Hey family, I'm Shahara and you're doing Life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Shahara, thank you so much for saying yes to have this conversation with me today. Oh, yes. I would. I, I mean, like Shonda Rhimes said, this is the year of yes. And I feel like that can be applicable in any year. So <laughs> I, 100% agree. I love that book. I listened to it on Audible. It was a good book. Yeah, you know, I actually didn't get an opportunity to uh, to read it, or I would say I didn't make time to read it. I do have it, but I was listening to her interview that she had on uh, Oprah Super Soul Conversations mm -hmm. about what inspired the book, and she kind of talked about uh, part of her journey and what she did in the year of yes. So I feel like I got the Cliff Notes version from that podcast. <laughs> you did, because I saw the I saw the the interview too, and and you did. But yeah. you know, the book is still good to to read. So when you have time. When you make time. I'll get, I'll get there. I'll get there. Yeah, definitely check it out. So Shahara, I like to start off every conversation just talking about how I come to know the person that I'm speaking with. So recently, um, probably like a month or so ago, I had someone back out of an interview, even though they agreed to do it. They came back and said that they, you know, they wanted to back out, didn't want to do the interview, and that's perfectly fine. And I was telling a friend, you know, about the situation and how I really wanted to talk to somebody about networking because I want to um, have a conversation on how we can use our networking skills to build a strong, rock solid support system. And mm -hmm. so my friend was like, I got the perfect person. I saw her at a conference. She does networking. I'm going to send you her profile. I said, okay, cool. And she sent me your Instagram profile. So I check you out on Instagram. I started listening to your IG um, TV um, videos. And I'm like, I like this girl. I was like, because we, you know, we, we here. Me and you, we here. You know, especially when we have a lot of similar beliefs, especially when it comes to relationships with, you know, with other women, you know, just building our rock solid friendship and those relationships. We're here on that. Yes. So I, I definitely love that. And I'm excited about this conversation because I'm like, this is going to be a very energetic and fun conversation because you are energetic 
and fun because when I started looking at your videos on, on Instagram, I kind of became a, a stalker just a little bit. <laughs> And I found you, I found you on YouTube, and then I started going through all of your videos. <laughs> Girl, and, and anything that's anything that's on YouTube now is from a couple of years ago. I have not been active on my YouTube channel, but um, and maybe we can talk a little bit about this later. I am prepping to uh, flood YouTube with a ton of new content, so uh, stuff that's definitely going to be probably applicable to what we talk about today so i'll throw yeah. that in there because girl that youtube that that's like a photo <laughs> a photo album you know like all of our social media whether it's our linkedin our facebook mm -hmm. our twitter um it becomes like a, a virtual photo album mm -hmm. and then it's there and sometimes you forget about it you go back through it and then you start re-watching and rereading some of the things that you said and you're like oh my goodness that was me then because my YouTube channel goes all the way back, I think, to like 2009-ish or 2008-ish, probably around that time. So it's mm -hmm. a time capsule. <laughs> and, it's, and it's funny that you bring that up because I ran across your videos when you were on The Jam. And on one of the segments for The Jam, you talked about how social media, say something on social media today that you're going to be proud about tomorrow. Something, something like that. Yes. And I was I just did. Like, this girl knows her stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, for the podcast. it's tough to kind of anticipate what your five year, uh, five year self in the future would feel proud of, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't know what you're going to be at that five year, you know, I'm 35, what I'm going to be at 40, you know, but I think that when you make those type of considerations, you become more of an active participant as to who you're becoming. And you have to be a lot more thoughtful. You know, you're not going to know exactly what you say in this moment and if it's going to make your 40-year-old self proud. But if you're taking the time to think about it first, you're eventually going to mold who that woman is. You're becoming that woman. So being intentional and thinking about those type of things, it almost turns out that you're going to make yourself proud because you thought about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. When, you know, when you broke it down on TV, I was like, oh, yeah, she's going to be perfect. She's going to be perfect. Yes, oh, yes. Yes. Perfect. And let me tell you how far back I went, because I saw your audition video for, for the Chicago traffic. Girl, when I, t yes. I, got, I got addicted. <laughs> you're, just so, you're just so natural in front of the camera. I just oh, thank you. To watch more. So for all of you who thank are listening. You. You have to go over to facebook.com forward slash live her truth and check out the video version because you just a yes. camera. So, so I had to ask, I had to ask, did you get the job? I did not. I what? did not. Well, let me, let me break this down to you. Cause this, this is one of those things where it like spread like wildfire. It was one of those last minute audition tapes that I sent in. And, um, back then I was just coming out of doing a little bit of, of work in the journalism world. And so last minute, I decided to submit that tape. I think they had over three or 4,000 submissions and I became part of the top, um, or I came in for like interviews, made it down to like the top 10. And the thing that I thought was actually quite um, interesting is out of the top 10 spots, mm -hmm. seven of those spots were taken up by black men and women. So I kind of already knew that they were probably looking for a black man or woman. Mm -hmm. And then of those seven, there were three black men and four black women, I believe. So I was like, I know that they're going to probably choose, you know, um, a black person. But, you know, the guy who ended up getting it, Derek Young, uh, he and I are still very supportive of each other. He actually just left the position, I think, within the last year. And um, it was it was it was tough. It was devastating almost when I didn't get it. Um, but then I kind of thought to myself, it makes sense for someone else to get that opportunity because I believed so much in what I was capable of doing. I kind of thought to myself, and no shade, Derek, if you're watching this, but this may be his opportunity to actually have TV time. And it, and I'm so confident. I have so much faith in, in my ability. I'm like, I know I'm going to get another opportunity, which of course those opportunities did, they came. So once I sat back in the space of that's not my only opportunity and there's room for everyone, 
uh, that that pain of not winning slowly subsided, you know, over over a few months or whatnot. But um, you know, but it's one of those things where we have our minds set on something and we have our goals and we have our visions, but it's important that we are clear on our vision, but not attached to our vision because our vision isn't always ours. Oh my goodness. Perfect segue. And you said so <laughs> much that I want to that I want to address. You know, first off, when I saw the audition tape, I had already seen so many of your other videos from like being on a jam, right? And other uh, news videos that when I came across the traffic audition tape, I, I, I kind of felt like this is kind of like closing her in a little bit because she's just this vibrant person with all of this personality. And then when I see the audition video, I just saw you kind of like boxed in a little bit. No shade, you know, to, 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 to Derek, but I just, I just, <laughs> felt, I just felt that way, you know? So that's why I wanted to ask you um, if you got the job, but I love the fact that you said that, you know, you're still is supportive of the person that actually got the position and, you know, saying that, you know, we shouldn't be like attached to how we, you know, achieve the vision. Oh my goodness. This is so in alignment because over the last few months, I've been teaching my listeners elements of building a rock solid strategy for manifesting a purpose driven vision. Okay. And we started off the conversation with talking about clarity what that means, what that looks like, and how to be more intentional in your day. And then the next conversation, we talked about purpose. What does that mean? You know, the evolution of purpose. And we talked about um, foundational work, like building healthy relationships, um, marriages, if you will, relationships with our children, because these are different aspects that can affect, you know, our pursuit of our vision, right? And so, the, the common denominator among these conversations was having a support system, which brings us to this conversation because building a support system is super uber important. And I truly think, and please chime in, but I think that when we think of the common thought around support system is just friends, family, you know, and like close girlfriends or your close guy friends, right? But I want us to, if that's the case for whoever's listening and watching, I want to expand your thinking when it comes to support systems. Because like for me personally, you know, my therapist is a part of my support system. In addition to, you know, the hubby, the friends and the family, right? My spiritual mentor is a part of my support system. The accountability group that I have, you know, that helps me with my business, that's a part of my, my support team. So what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because this is our first time having a conversation. Mm -hmm. This is our first time like seeing each other mm -hmm. through this venue. Mm -hmm. But I would be remiss if I didn't say that Lakeisha wasn't a part of my support system. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just evident because Lakeisha took the time out, someone that I don't even know, to watch my videos research what I got going on, uh, receive the, the recommendation and referral from another friend. Whoever that friend was, she's a part of my support system. Sometimes your support system far exceeds what it is that you can actually see. Probably the strongest people who support you are maybe perhaps people that you don't know or the people who give you that one referral or give you that one client or extend that one opportunity. And so your, your support system is as vast as, as the good that you put out in the world. And if you want a strong support system outside of just your immediate um, network, then I think that this is a prime example of being able to far exceed, you know, just the people that you can physically see and touch. And so now, even in this moment, I'm thinking to myself, my support system, is is huge like huge i mean the fact that i'm doing this podcast interview with you means that there was an unseen support system that was working together for my good to bring us together and so mm -hmm. i think now as i go about my day and as i go about my week and my month i'm going to think about the people that i do come in physical contact with and how i support them because then they become an extension 
And then when they go out, then those people become an extension. And when it comes back around, that slingshot comes back around to someone who I've never met before, like a Lakeisha, all of a sudden there is the evidence of my support system. Um, so I just think that it's, it goes even far beyond what it is that we actually see. You just expanded my, my thinking just, just right then and there, because I didn't even think to even take it that step further, you know, and you're absolutely right. I just think sometimes people feel as though that they just need like a small group. That's all they need. And it's just like, who, who told us that we needed to put a number on the number of people that support us? Who told us? Yeah. Where did we get that from? <laughs> and I think people, people are coming out of that space now where, you know, there was that no new friends, you know, type of feel. Mm -hmm. And I think people are kind of rejecting that now. Um, and not even just rejecting it, but I think they're moving more into a space of collaboration. They're moving more into a space of, yes, I have my besties from when I was in high school to college to when I moved to this new city. And it's like, we know that we have our tight network of friends, but we're also open to inviting new collaborators into our space, inviting new contributors into our space and being able to go out into the world and say, okay, who wants to work with me? Okay, who's on the same, on the same page? Who wants to align? Who's trying to elevate? Like, give me, give me that energy, you know? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think if you want to do big things in your life, if you want to do big things in your career, if you want to make radical change in, in whatever it is that your goals are, then you got to be radical with the way that you branch yourself out. If you have these big lofty visions, then you have to expand as a human being. And you, like you said, you talked about that video and when I did the audition with, with the news thing and how it kind of put me in a little bit of a box. And that was a blessing in disguise that it, I'm not meant to be in that type of format, you know? So if you're looking to kind of advance your goals and live your best life, then that may mean expanding your life, expanding your network, expanding your experiences. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And since communication is is your jam, tell us how communication, you know, affects the strength of our support system. Ew, oh my gosh. I think that um, the one thing that if, if you're having issues with your communication skills, but you still want to cultivate a strong support system and a strong network, mm -hmm. I think the key thing that you can do is just express gratitude and say thank you to the people who are, you know, running by your side. Um, just say thank you, like, hey, I know you doing this for me for free, or I know that you're doing this for me for a discount, or I know that you squeeze me into your schedule knowing that this is a busy time for you, but thank you for making time for me. You know, like just expressing that gratitude and letting people know that they're seen, that they're heard, that they're acknowledged, that they're appreciated, that goes a long way. Um, there are so many different ways that, you can cultivate relationships with the way that you communicate, but the best way to strengthen these relationships is to show gratitude. And sometimes that expression doesn't just come in the form of verbally saying thank you, but it could be showing up when they need your support. Mm -hmm. It could be extending your time, volunteering your effort. Um, it could be through a thank you card. It could be through a Starbucks gift card. You know, all of those are forms of how we communicate, whether it's in the, in the verbal or in the actual physical um, space of giving. Um, so I would just say, like, when you think about your network and you think about the people who are supporters for you, then I would just say, what can you do for them this week? Or what can you plan this month? Maybe every Tuesday you pick up the phone and you call somebody that you know that has been supporting you. Um, maybe there's a supporter that, um, has always been there, always shows up, but you haven't spent any one-on-one -on -one time with them. Invite them over to your home, you know, have some coffee, uh, buy some, get some takeout, put a frozen pizza in the oven or something, you know, um, because that really shows people that you see them. And you're absolutely right. And I, and I love that. Thank you for that. And that goes to like, you can do those same things People could do the same things that you just said for people that you don't necessarily know. You know, think about all the ways that you felt as though that you wasn't supported in whatever way and then pay it forward. And the reason why I say that is because at the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey, 
I felt like he was like pulling teeth to get women to like collaborate and like partner or just give me a shout out. So instead of getting bitter about it, I decided to do a, a, a little segment on my Instagram page, like on Thursdays, let me acknowledge somebody else, especially somebody who may not even know me, right? But somebody that I'm following on Instagram, pulling inspiration from, let me highlight her, you know, for the day. That's a way you can um, support and show your gratitude because even from just like doing that, that put me on the radar for other people, you know? And so they started following me back and, you know, and just, paying for it so now i'm actually getting what it is that i want because i put it out there so now i'm receiving it back so that's that that was a great example and i think that that's exactly um it, it's a universal law it's a principle that it's cause and effect if you want to be wealthier then teach somebody else how to be wealthy if you want to be healthier then teach someone else how to be healthy um if you want people to shout you out then you guys to shout other people out. You can't necessarily um, expect certain things from this world that you haven't put into it. Um, it it's also, for example, like we hear about, um, you know, when you go to the cashier you, in the grocery store and they're having a bad day, then, you know, you can feel their energy and then all of a sudden it kind of makes you feel like, ugh. But if you want to change that, if you know you're having a bad day and you don't want to put that bad energy out there, you have to deliberately and intentionally like put some good out into the world. When I'm feeling a, a, like a procrastinator, when I'm feeling like I'm being lazy, when I'm feeling a little bummed, I intentionally go and try to encourage somebody else. I intentionally try to like, you know, cheer somebody on and be like, hey, you can do it today. Don't be procrastinating, even though I'm the one procrastinating. But if I could tell somebody else <laughs> not to procrastinate, it, it does something miraculously within me that now all of a sudden I'm like, how can I go over there and tell her not to procrastinate and I'm over here doing the same thing. Let me get my ish together, you know? So, um, so yeah, but I think that once you start doing that, that's where, and again, and that's the seed of support system, you know, going out and, and casting that net first and, and being the, it's going to sound corny. I forget who said this, but being the light in the world that you wish to see, you know, Mm -hmm. um and then it and then it will reflect back onto you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i love that you know shahara i was watching a a, a tadex talk and it was on networking and so throughout the speech the presenter said a couple of different times talk to strangers and by the third time she said it i took notice of it because I'm like, why is she still, well, I guess it does make sense for us to talk to strangers. So it makes sense why she would say that. But then, you know, the words that she used, it made me think back to my childhood. Because as a kid, and you can probably, you know, you know, uh, you probably share this experience and those who are listening probably have shared this experience as well. But as a kid, I was taught to not to talk to strangers. And to talk to strangers, it was dangerous. Let me just be real <laughs> for a second it was it was a danger to talk to strangers like life or death type situation right so it was really important that i didn't talk to strangers and if i did talk to strangers i was probably punished for it so having that foundation of, of teaching if you will from a childhood do you think that has subconsciously affected how we communicate with strangers on a personal and professional level Oh, definitely. I mean, there are so many different things that we experience in our childhood that, uh, you know, kind of has cemented fears, you know? I mean, it's, it's, it's just random talking to a stranger anyways, let alone when you were raised as a kid to don't talk to strangers, don't talk to strangers. And it's tough because I feel like kids don't need to be talking to strangers. There's some crazy people out here scooping yeah. up kids and stuff, you know? Yeah. So yeah. It's, I think it's a difficult, it's a challenging lesson to teach a child at, at that stage in their life. What we want to say is discernment because we still have to exercise a certain amount of discernment when we talk to strangers. Mm -hmm. We should not be talking to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, given the climate of society right now, especially with the, you know, a, um, a pandemic of women, Black women specifically, Mm -hmm. just going missing and it yes. could start from a simple 
I'm being kind and I'm just being, Mm -hmm. you know, polite and I'm having this conversation and the next thing you know it, you're distracted and that's it. Mm -hmm. So it's very challenging to kind of encourage people to stop a stranger. That was a campaign that I did a couple of years ago about, Mm -hmm. about kind of starting conversations with people. Um, but, but I think the important thing about, um, talking to strangers and opening up your network with strangers is to just use your discernment, meaning a certain level of judgment and allowing, tapping into really hearing people before you even speak to them. Um, And then also looking at the environment that you're in. Now, if you go to a networking event and it's a women's networking event, Mm -hmm. like all of them women are probably going to be good people to talk to. Talk to that stranger for sure. You know, talk to that woman in that same room that got invited to that same event or whatever other networking event that you're at. Um, Other cases where you're sitting at a bar waiting for a friend and there's someone sitting next to you. You know, when you're in that close proximity with someone, it could be a great conversation to say, well, what brings you out here tonight? You know, how's your work week then? And you can start those conversations. But behind it all, I encourage you to talk to people that you don't know. But I think that there's a practice, an internal practice of deepening and strengthening your level of discernment. How do you sense and how do you feel people before you even open up your mouth? And are you coming to them with the spirit of love? Um, Because otherwise, sometimes people may not have been as kind unless you were kind first. Mm. Um, So I definitely say talk to strangers, Mm -hmm. you know, Uh, but it's, it is evident that we've been taught and it's been ingrained that talking to strangers is dangerous. And even as adults, we are still learning that it's dangerous to talk to strangers. But in that case, you have to use your discernment and think about your environment and who you're around. And if you're in a space that's supposed to be conducive for you to talk to other strangers, then you need to go at it, run to them. Mm-hmm. I love that. I think discernment is key um, because I, I wasn't taught that, you know, no shade to, to my mom, no shade to my dad. But um, yes, it was important to teach me how to talk to strangers. But at some point, nobody taught me discernment and how to distinguish between the different situations. Like you, you know, like you said, I just grew up um, with that with that mindset and it just subconsciously affected how I, you know, talk to people and, and approach to people. And even like just growing up in Chicago in, in general, like just talking in general <laughs> with people, you know, to people walking down the street, it just was not something that, that we did. It just wasn't something that we did. So when I moved to Atlanta, cause I went from Chicago, Minnesota to Atlanta, that's when I kind of got, you know, a feel for the, you know, the Southern hospitality, if you will, because people would just speak random people would just say hello. And I would look at people like they was crazy. Like, what? 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 But you know, I had to, I had to adapt because how am I going to build any type of relationship with people, you know, in Atlanta if I don't adapt? So by experience and just being thrown in deep waters, if you will, is how I, I learned discernment. So yeah. So that's key. Discernment. Yeah. That was a good, for sure. That was a good point. So let's let's take it to like a personal level because i i think that this next point i'm about to make which is that you know as women we have this stigma that we just can't get along right <laughs> and the more i see us partnering to partnering together and collaborating you know now that i'm in this entrepreneurial space i want to say that you know that stigma is slowly dying off but I know that a lot of us high achieving women, we, we, some of us, we just, we just stick to that claim that we cannot work with other women. And I hate to say the word can't, but we just feel as though that we cannot work with other women. But as higher achievers, we have these massive, extensive professional networks that have both men and women, right? But for whatever reason, we can't get along with women in our personal lives. In your professional opinion, how can we use those same skills that we, you know, tapped into to build our extensive professional network in order to build our support system on a personal level? You know, what's crazy is 
I'm going to, I'm going to say it's, it's a mindset. Mm. It's a total mindset. My mindset has been configured for many, many, many years now that women work together, that black women, we support each other. That has been all I've seen for many, many years. Mm -hmm. When people talk about women, they, we can't get along. And to me, that just reminds me of high school. I'm like, since, since when? You mean since high school when we were still trying to figure out what being a woman was? Like, since high, high school was probably the last time that I had any type of feeling like I don't have camaraderie with other women. Mm -hmm. Maybe somewhere in college. But by the time I finished college, I chose the women that I decided to vibe with. And so if I didn't vibe with you, it was like, oh, we're not hanging out. You know, oh, I met this girl. Ooh, ooh, I don't know about her. You know, I keep it moving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so over the years, I've collected numbers and numbers and numbers and numbers and numbers of, of amazing women who have changed my perspective on this idea that women don't get along. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are moments in workplace where women don't get along, but it's not just because we're women. It's because sometimes you just don't get along with people. You know, sometimes there's contention because of insecurities in the workplace and feeling like <clears throat> someone's coming in and taking my spot or she thinks she's all that, but it's only coming from a place of insecurity. If someone has, a, has beef, <laughs> has beef, <laughs> but you know, so again, I think it's a mindset. Everyone that I follow on Instagram, they're always talking about, sex. I mean, one word that I love that's so popular right now is sis. I see you, sis. I see you, sis. You know, like mm. that word mm -hmm. and the fact that now we casually call women that we don't even know yeah. sis yeah. changes the way that we connect with each other. It's like, I call everybody boo. Hey, boo. Hey, boo. Hey, boo. Like, everybody is boo. I just meet you, and then I send you a text message. Hey, boo, it was a pleasure meeting you, <laughs> you know? So I'm already debunking the fact that we're not, we, we don't have a space of, of camaraderie. Um, so I personally believe that this idea that women, specifically Black women, can't get along is a farce. It doesn't exist for me, but I've been intentional about creating environments that only bring about peace and prosperity. Mm -hmm. And if somebody, if I'm introduced to somebody that doesn't represent or embody, you know, sisterhood, mm -hmm. then they become a non-factor, meaning I don't relate with them. They, they go, I release them off into their destiny. Like it's that, it, and, it, and it's nothing that has to be said. There's nothing that has to be done. It's, it's, a, it's an emotional check of saying, oh, oh, okay, that's not, you know, I don't even make the decision that that's not somebody I'm going to hang out with. I just don't. Right. Yeah. Um, so I just feel like as you start to say, every woman I meet, we're, we greet in peace. Every woman I meet, we greet in, an, in acceptance. Every woman I meet, we... Um, we, we greet each other with joy, you know? And when Lakeisha introduces me to, when you introduce me to Yosis and Yoga, what I call goal friends, the women that you set and accomplish goals with, goal friend, when you introduce me to your goal friends, you're introducing me with love and light. And so they're gonna receive me with love and light. I just went um, to a birthday party for a girlfriend of mine. And um, her name is, well, the name of her business is My Living Spree. So that's, that's on Instagram, mm -hmm. Ashley, Ashley Cockrell with My Living Spree. And mm -hmm. we met back in June or July-ish and immediately made a connection. She became a host for uh, my Champagne Show and Tell Socials, which I'll talk about. That's a mobile public speaking group, group coaching program. And we just clicked up and we looked at each other and we were like, yes. <laughs> and so she invited me to her birthday dinner just on this past Friday, mm -hmm. and it was, it was 10 of us. And she had all of these women who she had known for 10, 12, five, six, six years. I mean, I think I was the newest friend in the group 
not even knowing her for a year. Mm. But these women, like, were like, yeah, sis, welcome, sis, what's good, sis? Like, I got, I got their phone numbers. What, one of, when me and one of her girlfriends decided to stay out longer than everybody else. And Ashley was like, I'm out. And her, the girlfriend was like, I, I want to stay too. I was like, well, we staying, you know? Um, but I, I provide that as an example because I think that it's not by chance that I'm continuously greeted with circles of women who are cool, basically, you know? Yeah. Who are inclusive. But I do think it's also been a space where now I'm, I'm in that sweet spot. So that's, I continue to manifest that. Mm -hmm. And so if you are in a space where you feel like you're having a hard time penetrating sister circles, mm -hmm. then start concentrating on breaking that in your mind, that you are not an outsider, that you are invited, that you are included, that you do meet women who embrace you, you know, and when you do meet that one woman who does embrace you and who is friendly, especially as someone new to the network, then show gratitude for that. Mm -hmm. And when you show gratitude for that, then it'll multiply, mm -hmm. you know? So don't think that we don't get along. Think that we do. And that's what you'll start to see. Mm -hmm. I love that. And, you know, I agree with you that it starts with your, your mindset, right? But I also think that the, the condition of your mindset can be a result of unresolved trauma. And the reason why I say that is based off of my personal experience. Because um, I was sexually abused by my stepfather for eight years. It started when I was eight years old. So when I was, you know, sent off into the world, if you will, to figure out who I was, you know, before I started, you know, the healing journey, my mindset was off. So when I went to Atlanta, you know, I had a, I had a, a what was the word? You had a, a chip, a chip yes. on your shoulder. Yes, I had a chip on my shoulder. You know, because I hadn't dealt with the unresolved trauma. So when I was mean mugging other women, it wasn't necessarily that I was just being mean. It was just the fact that I hadn't, you know, addressed or dealt with the trauma that I left behind in Chicago. Because for me, I'm just, you know, I left Chicago, so I just left the trauma behind, thinking that it wouldn't follow me, but it did, and it, you know, it, it affected you know how I showed up in the world it affected my relationships obviously you know and it wasn't until I realized what I was doing and changed my mindset after getting help you know to deal with the uh, you know the sexual abuse that's when my relationship started to change and I was able to you know have a good good girlfriend and it ultimately led me on the path that I'm on today because the name of my business is called a sister's truth I'm all about self-awareness I do self-awareness coaching and the basis of my business is also sisterhood because I know the importance of you know support and supporting our sisters and and just being that thing that someone else needs, whatever that is. I know the power in that. And so I embed that into my business. So, you know, mindset, unresolved trauma. I know it may be a lot of women out there right now who's listening and watching us who has some type of trauma that's unresolved. And it doesn't have to be on a level of um, sexual abuse like, like me. It could be something like, you know, being bullied as a child, you know, losing a parent at a young age, you know, whatever that trauma is. If it's unresolved and you're thinking that it's not affecting you, it possibly can be. It possibly can be in how you're showing up in the world and dictating the type of relationships uh, that you're either building or not building. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I think that it's interesting that you you talked about kind of, well, I will say this. I think that their sisterhood is strengthened through being vulnerable with each other because we all going through the same things, you know, like when again, for that woman who's like, I'm having a tough time cracking open new networks of, you know, inviting women. Right. Yeah. But you see a woman and she got a mean mug on her face. You be having a mean mug, too. So know that if it's a trauma know that it, you don't take it personal yeah, yeah. everybody ain't mad and angry at you you know 
see her for where she's at and and know that maybe what you see on the outside is just is just a reflection of maybe some things that she's dealing with on the inside you know and and once you get to that place of being able to share that and i think we all have to be forthcoming about the challenges that we have and the disappointments that we've experienced and and all of that and i think that that strengthens sisterhood as well I agree. I 100% I agree. And it's funny that you bring up vulnerability because the best friend that I met in college, once she knew about the sexual abuse, for her, it all clicked like, oh. oh. So that's why you act like that. You know? <laughs> She realized that I wasn't trying to be an ass. It wasn't personal towards her. It was just some things that I needed to deal with uh, on the inside. And so, you know, um, we got to know each other. And now she's my my best friend right now to this day. Absolutely love Rose to death. So, so hey, yeah. Rose. Yeah. Don't, don't take it personal. And that's a good point. See the woman for who she is and where she is right now in that moment. And just don't take it personal. And be that support. Yeah. Be that yeah. Friend. And be that friend that 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 she needs. So, okay, so you gave us tools, right? To how to use our our skills for building a professional network and what to build our professional support system. So we have the support system in place. So now, Shahara, how do we communicate what is it is that we actually need? Because <laughs> it's you know, have a support system. It's a whole other thing to tell them what it is that we need. You know, I think that. Okay, the first thing, as I had mentioned before, you know, give what it is, put out in the world what it is that you want to receive back, right? Mm -hmm. And in this space of networking, there is such a fine line of, you know, networking and then going straight for an ask, you know, straight for, oh, I need this or straight for an, I need that. And um, I, would, I would start to look at networking a little bit more um, not networking, but the cultivating of relationships as a much slower game. Mm -hmm. Networking is one thing. Networking is getting the contact. Uh, network is uh, making a, a quick connection. Networking is building fast rapport. Networking is uncovering a mutual, uh, um, something that you have in common. You know, mm -hmm. that's networking. When you get out there, you're finding the people that quite possibly could be that you could be a service to and that they could be a service to you, right? But when you're wanting a need or an ask or maybe it's um, um, a mention or uh, a resource or an introduction or whatever it is that you may desire from that person, mm -hmm. I would look at the cultivation of that relationship as a slow game. Hmm. Once, you let, once you let go of thinking that I'm going to, get this out of that person, then you can build a relationship because people do things for the people that they like. And I don't care how professionally or how meticulously you articulate a, a ask or a transaction. Mm -hmm. If they don't like you, ain't going for it. Mm. And so I, in my space of networking, I go into it with the long game. When I meet somebody, I'm like trying to be best friends. You know, I'm trying to like love them so that they can fall in love with me. Mm -hmm. um, when I cultivate a relationship, I'm thinking about how can I add value, you know, mm -hmm. and it doesn't even have to be immediately. I, you can add value by sharing a really funny meme. Y'all exchanged on Instagram. Them funny memes that you be sending to your girlfriends, send it to that person that you just met that, that previous weekend. Look at cultivating relationships as a long game. And, and people do things for the people that they like. Mm -hmm. um, people do things for the people that they know, that they trust. So you have to build that trust and you have to build that likability. And, and you do that by genuinely being interested in the people that you desire to be a part of your network. And it may not seem like instant or immediate gratification, but if that's what you're looking for, then that's what's setting you up for failure. And people sense that and people know that, and then people run from that. Mm -hmm. and, and then you become a nuisance and nobody wants a nuisance in their network. So when you think about support system, when you think about how do you communicate, when you think about how do you build this network, when you think about how do you, how do you cultivate relationships to ultimately add more value and benefit from your network, 
Yeah. It is being genuinely, sincerely interested in the success of someone else and paying attention and figuring out how can I help them in the little bit that you can. And as long as you're not putting pressure for it to be something by a certain time, as long as you're patient and you trust the process and you trust that God is really doing all the heavy lifting and the real work and you just do what's right in front of you, mm -hmm. you're going to find that month over month, you're going to be, these blessings and these miracles are going to start popping up and you're going to wonder why. It's because you were patient, you were trusted the process, you did it with joy and you did it with sincerity. I love that. I love that. You are amazing, Shara. Have you, have you heard that today yet? I know, you the first. <laughs> <laughs> and preferably I won't be the last to tell you that today. <laughs> yes, yes. I absolutely enjoyed you on the podcast today, having this conversation. But before I let you go, I would just like to know, give us one book or audible book, because everybody knows I'm addicted to audible, that you have read or listened to that has impacted your life in a positive way. Um, that book is called Happy Pocket Full of Money. I have this here. Happy Pocket Full of Money. Yes, and it's by um, Cameron. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but uh -huh. put in Happy Pocket Full of Money on Amazon. His okay. first name is Cameron. His last name is, I think he's Nigerian, so I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but um, check it out. And it's not just a book that I read. It's a book that I study. Ooh. And I've been, I've been reading this book. I usually have two books that I study and mm -hmm. then a third book that I read. And the third book that I read is always just trying to get the information, but seeing if it's a book that I actually want to study. Um, so I keep two books on deck that I, that so I study actually study. meaning that you actually implementing what you've read in the book. Yeah. I don't, I don't stop reading the book. I'll read the book over and over and over and over again. And I've been reading happy, happy pocket full of money since August of, 2018. So, uh -huh. and I just, and I just can't get enough of it. It's it, for me, it reinforces because sometimes you get a lot of gems, you get a lot of good information in these books that you read, but you're on to the next one so quickly. Have you really implemented? Have you really internalized? Have you had, has that information really soaked into your, your habits to where now that book actually adds value and it's not just food for thought. <clears throat> I don't want food for thought. I want food for action. So it, so when I study a book, it's about literally indoctrinating myself in that methodology. And, and, and then until I get bored, but if I haven't gotten bored yet, that means there's still much for me to gain from the words and the insights in the book. So Happy Pocket Full of Money is great. It talks all about wealth consciousness and how we um, build and live in abundance financially in life. And also um, changing the framework of what wealth and how we understand wealth and how we like emit well. So I would definitely say, ladies, go get it. Ooh, I love that. I'm definitely gonna have to put that on the list and, and check I'm it telling out. you. And check it out. Yes. I love that you say study because with my book, 31 Days of Truth, Manifest Your Passion, Power, and Perseverance, I too don't want people to just read it and go on about their life. I want to make mm -hmm. sure that they are actually implementing what it is that they learn. So I do, uh, well, less year before last 2018 I did a um book club for my book and I think I'm gonna I'm do that more on a regular basis probably in April I'm gonna do like a book club where we sit down and, and we discuss my book because it's one of those books that you can read like over and over and over again right and depending on where you are what season you in you can read the same chapter and get something totally different from it exactly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. love that so thank you for that Last question, when describing the meaning of living your truth, I want you to complete this phrase. I'm gonna give you two words and you tell me what your third word is, okay? Okay. The words are self-awareness, purpose, and? Courage. Ooh, you said that like, duh, courage. <laughs> yeah, it's not, you already know what you want. You already know what you desire. You already know what you wanna do. Stop vacillating back and forth and concentrate on the courage that it needs that you need in order to take action on the things that you know that you desire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, that's where it's at. Absolutely. So, and for those of you yeah. who are out there listening and watching, if you need any help, holla at your sister. 
hit me up, go to LakeishaWooder.com forward slash coaching, and we can sit down and we can talk about that thing. <laughs> hey, man, you better get that plug in. And speaking of plugs, let me just introduce um, something new that I'm doing in my business, and it's called Champagne Show and Tell. So you can go to www.champagneshowandtell.com, and that's A-N-D, champagneshowandtell.com. And um, you can visit the website. It'll run you through everything that is uh, a part of the social, what it means to be a champagne show and tell host, what it means for your guests. Um, and then you can drop your email right there and uh, you can book your social online. Pick a date on your calendar, um, talk with your goal friends, figure out what date you may want to do it. And uh, then we can set up a welcome call with me. So that's, you can find all of that at champagneshowandtell.com. Awesome. I just wrote that down for myself, y'all. So don't good. Worry. I'm going to put that in the show notes as well. Shahara, thank you so much. This was amazing. I yes. It. No, this was, this was a great conversation. And I'm, I'm so grateful that the stars have aligned. And thank you to your friend who recommended me. Who is the friend again anyway? Mia Bradford. Shout out to Mia. Oh, Mia. That's what's up. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Okay, so I'm, I'm definitely glad for Mia. Um, but that, that's, that's support. That's the support system we were talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so you are officially a part of my support team, Shahara. Yes. Yes. You, you're officially a girlfriend. You're my girlfriend now. <laughs> <laughs>